Next on Cal High Sports Bay Area, great spring sports action, including Milpitas in a De Anza Division battle with Los Gatos, Park Alanis battles College Park, and Sarah meets St. Francis. Softball action from the Livermore Stampede, including Alhambra versus Foothill, Menlo and Sacred Heart Prep battle in the cross. We'll meet the East Bay softball team remembering their fallen coach and the baseball star who's great on the mound, but a star in the classroom. It's all next on Cal High Sports Bay Area. Sports Bay Area here at the Silver Creek Sportsplex. I'm Robert Brownstein. And I'm Marissa Levis. We start this week in the Mission Valley League, where league play begins this week. Two of the three teams with top pre-league records meeting with a home-and-home -home series starting Wednesday. That's right. The Colts from James Logan feature hot-hitting junior James Collier, while Newark expects to battle with the Colts for the Mission Valley League title. Mission Valley League opening day this week. The Newark Memorial Cougars take the field as they host Logan in the Mission Valley League opener. Top of the second, bases loaded, two out for the Colts. Chris Ramos sends a tough chance to left. It falls for a hit. One run is in. Here comes Daniel Ramos. It's a double for Chris and a 2-0 Logan lead. Still in the second, two on for the pitcher, Rogelio Reyes, who had a great day at the plate. He sends this one all the way to the wall in right center. One run is in. Here comes Chris Ramos. It's a 4-0 Logan lead, a triple for Reyes. Meantime, on the mound, the Calbound senior was dealing this one of his six strikeouts in the game. Things settled down from there. Nice Newark D at shortstop. Lauro Sanchez charges the chopper and a fine throw to get the runner in first. Runner at third for Logan. The pitch is wild. The runner takes off from third. Catcher Hunter Harris throws to Josh Ramirez and the runner is out at the plate. Nice glove work here by the Colts shortstop Chris Ramos. His pitcher likes that as James Logan takes the league opener behind a big game for Reyes on the mound and at the plate. Logan wins it for nothing. Sticking on the baseball diamond, we head to California School for the Deaf as the Eagles host Fremont Christian. And in the first, we have Fremont jumping out to a lead. Tommy Bean connects to bring in Ethan Yip and it's 2-0 Warriors. Then with two outs in the second inning, Jong Sanguetti gets it in the air. And this one will fall as Gabe Halsani and Elijah Liston make it 4-0. But the Eagles would get out of it by the way of the third baseman Kobe Sittman's nice glove and throw to Luke Bella at first. Fremont threatening again in the third with two outs and runners on, but Tyler Harmel makes a play for three outs but tosses it to Jacob Corey just in case. CSD comes up to the plate and it's Spezio Harmount playing heads up balls. The third strike is dropped out at first, but Jacob Corey comes in to score for one game. But freshman Bubba Gomez would have something to say about that. Bubba blasts this one in for a triple. Weston Coffey and Sanguetti score 6-1 Warriors. And then it's Cameron Nilon will get a hold of one, which plates Anthony Lemus for a seven-run lead. The runs would add up for Fremont Christian, but Bubba Gomez had himself a day on the mound as well as the freshman toss a five inning no hitter as Fremont Christian takes this one by a final of 20 to 1. Contra Costa County Sports is brought to you by Stat Med Urgent Care. The right care right now. The Livermore Stampede is back featuring Alhambra and Foothill. Bottom one, Alana Mendez wasting no time for the Falcons. She lays down the perfect butt and hustles to first. The Falcons still threatening in the first. Maddie Warren likes what she sees. That's a base hit and Foothill takes the one nothing lead to start. Top two, Alhambra looking to cut into the deficit. Kara De Mercurio is going to send this one deep. So deep, it's out of here. And we are locked at one. The Bulldogs looking to add on. Morgan Azevedo connects for the single to keep things going for the Bulldogs. But Nailani Skates wants out and she gets the batter swinging to end the inning and preserve the tie. Bottom four still tie game. Reagan Lacey gets the ball to drop and the Falcons are in position to take the lead. But check out this diving grab by Brianna Perez to escape the inning. Who cares if you're eating dirt because she's out. Top six Alhambra with no runners on. Reagan Silva at the plate and she hits a bomb to center field. The Bulldogs second home run of the game and it's three to two Alhambra. Bottom seven, one last chance for Foothill. Runner on first, the ball is hit, but Carly Sparacino does a nice job tagging the runner and throwing a first for the double play to end the game. Now Hamburg gets the victory with a final of 3-2 to two in the first day of the Livermore Stampede. Each week we bring you the Players of the Week brought to us by the Hip Hop Department in Music Production at the Rikers Center. The players chosen from last week's games, here are this week's Players of the Week. Go Hot Players of the Week. 
Blackie Santa. Yeah, we back. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to your bragging rights, Miss Megan Bauer. Let him taste the dust, make a take a second shower. Learn lesson how to go against the matching doors. You're gonna have to score more than you ever had before. They get mad, of course, facing number two. When you're facing her, yeah, you come to lose. Two home runs and four RBIs. Still a sophomore, yeah, she on the rise. She on the rise. Up to the next. She a pioneer Mustang, Holly has a battle pitch so fast she can hit her vision narrow. Number 24 dominated the mound, her right is direct, championship bound. Through the whole game, only allowed three hits. 11 batters out, she's about these shifts. No foul split sticks, we like wild these chick. Off to a great start, bow be sick. Watch her dominate, show us how she pitch. On fire, can put it out, she lit. Go high. Players of the week. Each week, Muir orthopedic specialists bring us great advice on sports-related injuries. Here's Dr. Matthew Pesci with this week's tip. Most of us are aware that a concussion requires a period of rest from exercise and activity to recover. However, it is just as important to rest from cognitive activity. Depending on the severity of the concussion and the symptoms, intense concentration and memory tasks may be very difficult to perform and may even make your symptoms worse. Cognitive rest may mean taking some time off school, or continuing school with some academic accommodations, such as abbreviated days or limited homework and test taking. It is important that the school is aware that a student has sustained a concussion so that they can work together to formulate an IEP, or Individualized Educational Program, to meet the needs of the student. Equally as important is cognitive rest at home, so limiting reading, television, video games, computer use, and texting is also essential in promoting recovery. Coming up, AD in the division showdown with Los Gatos hosting Milpitas. And the softball team remembering their fallen coach who died protecting his city. Our Stevens Creek Toyota Spirit of Achievement story is next. Muir Orthopedic Specialist, the leader in innovative sports medicine, is proud to present its new 46,000 square foot facility in Walnut Creek. This new leading edge facility combines high tech equipment, an Olympic weightlifting area, indoor turf field for training and rehab, and expanded physical therapy facilities. The new Muir Orthopedic Facility features efficient and personalized check-in, spacious reception areas, and on-site digital x-rays for fast results. For the best care for your treatment and recovery, visit the doctors at Muir Orthopedic Specialist. Specialists. The Rikus Center for Human Enhancement offers a range of programs in the athletic fitness department designed to train athletes of all ages and abilities. Our programs range from Rise Up for student athletes 9 and older to Pinnacle and Team Training Sessions for more advanced athletes with a specific far-reaching goal. Or sign up for CORE and get a customized workout plan designed for whatever intensity or ability level you want to achieve. From Pinnacle to CORE, the Rikus Center has a program to help you achieve your goals. So it's simple, if you've got goals, Come to the Rikers Center. It's a new season at Stevens Creek Toyota, and we're proud to present this year's all-star lineup. Like home run deals on Camry, the original Swagger Wagon, Sienna, and our number one player, better than par, Prius. Plus experience genuine Toyota service in our state-of-the-art facility. They're all here, your hometown champs, only at Stevens Creek Toyota San Jose. Visit us online at StevensCreekToyota.com. Back at the Silver Creek Sportsplex with action from the De Anza Division as first place Los Gatos enters this game with a perfect 6-0 league record with senior Ryan Galt having a big year. That's right, the Cats taking on second place Mel Pitas, just one game behind the Los Gatos Cats. It's our CCS Monster Game. Our Taylor Lambert was there. Welcome to Milpitas High School today. Big matchup today between the host Trojans and the Las Gatos Wildcats. Traveling up 880 for a little baseball action. The visiting Wildcats are coming off a season last year where they reached the CCS title game. They had a great season last year and are off to another great start this season. Milpitas, meanwhile, will combat the Wildcat bats with Jason Haug. He'll be on the bump for the Trojans this evening. Really a great looking game between the two very well matched teams, so we made it the monster game. Leading off for the Wildcats, second baseman, number three, Ryan Galt. Cal High Sports Bay Area intern and Milpitas alum Adrian Soriano on the mic for the Trojans staff and bro. 
it was working for the Trojans early. First inning, John McCauley on third. He'll come home as Anthony Tillage hustles down the line. Then Andrew Thompson will keep the line moving. Grounder squeaks into right, and Sam Robios is plated to make it 2-0. And Milpitas was untouchable early. Watch Sam Robios is short. Both his mitt and the ball pop up. He catches both and makes the throw to Anthony at first. Sammy Ballgame brought his big play pants to the game. Watch this. Catches both, makes the transfer, and then makes the throw to first base. An absolutely fantastic play. But Tyler Williams is done with that highlight that Los got a sophomore. Quiets the crowd with a double to the fence for the Cats. Moose. Then with two outs, Ryan Galt gets his hustle on. Racing to first base, he's going to be safe. Must have been the great first base coaching by Mark Cantley. Nate Loro scores, and it's 2-1 in the fifth inning, and LG strings more contact together in the sixth inning. Zach Smith brings in Jake Holton 2-2. Then it happens. Harry Hibbert gets a hold of one, and Hibbert hits it so far, the ball goes out of the field to play for what the kids call a home run. It's where you get to run around the bases all excited. 4-2. Runners in scoring position for Milpitas, but wouldn't you know it, Harry Hibbert makes the play once more, and Los Gatos wins 4-2. Jake Holden with nine strikeouts in the complete game effort, and we talked to him post game. I'm um, starting a little slow as a team. We that first inning was a little rough, but settled in as a team. Got some big hits and big situations, and we came out the win. We're doing well. We're on. We're just we were struggling towards the beginning, but now we're on the up and coming, and we're doing well in the league. So we just need to keep that up. Definitely just keep on getting better and better as a team and win CCS. In Milpitas with the Togo's Monster Game, I'm Taylor Lambert, Cal High Sports Bay Area. A good old-fashioned spit circle for Mountain View as they get ready to take on Hillsdale. The Knights up 1-0 and they would add to that lead as Mackenzie Driscoll steps in and knocks one back up the middle to score Lauren Kierke and it's 2-0. Kierke would do damage herself her next time up as she dumps one into center field as Isabella Zalba comes around to score and it is 3-0. Knights looking for more with runners on first and second. Aaron McCoy lays down the perfect slap bunt. The wheel play was on and there's no one at second base. So Talia Franco comes all the way around to score and it is four to nothing. Hillsdale looking for more, but the Spartan defense would have none of it as Rachel Clem snags it, steps on the bag and slings it over to first where Cece Pelzazari digs it out for the nice double play. Mountain View getting the bats going now as Emma Bice knocks one deep into the gap and she is off to the races as a two-run home run for Bice and the Hillsdale lead is 6-2. Driscoll would have an answer for the Knights, however. She drives one into the very same gap. That one is going to roll for a while and she slides in ahead of the tag for the inside the park homer and Hillsdale goes on to win this one with the final of 7-2. Each week, Stevens Creek Toyota brings the stories of athletes who have overcome adversity in their lives to succeed in school and in sports. Jack Washer joins us now with the story of a fallen police officer remembered by his team. Robert, what Scott Longer meant to the Freedom Softball team can't be summed up in just one sentence. There's just so much to say about him. But one message still lingers each day the Falcons take the field. Every day, life moves on, but not without remembering part of the past. It just reminds me that he's still here. Scott Lunger helped coach the Freedom Falcons softball team for the past six years. Good or bad, Lunger kept the mood light. You know, it just, he was just a person where if I was having a bad day, I know I could talk to him and, and he fixed everything. You know, he, he would make everything better for me. He'd be like telling jokes and We'd be in the middle of drills and he'd tell us all to come over and he'd show us a video that he thought was funny even if it was just really stupid. A Hayward police officer, Longer installed a tradition into the team he learned while on the force. At the end of our game we would do a single clap all together and he said that it meant that um, his SWAT team, they all came home safe and they completed the mission. Partner down, partner down. Who's down? Sergeant Longer's down. But in July of 2015, during a routine traffic stop, Sergeant Longer was shot and killed in the line of duty. He left behind two kids, a fiance, and a team now missing his joyful presence. I just started bawling. Um, I just remember the, the heartbreak and the, the confusion because, you know, why did he leave? Like, he, it's just wrong place at the wrong time, and it just it hit really hard. 
With Coach gone, the team found ways to make sure he never strayed too far. His bucket. He was really protective of it. <laughs> Displayed with his police badge on both sides, a way to honor his memory, along with a message longer repeated every day. Everything was for the greater good, so he wanted everybody to just stick together and get through it as best as we can. So I know that when I see the bucket, it's just a way to keep going. With each day, life continues to move on, but the past is always remembered, never forgotten, always by one side. He's still here and that he's always gonna be with us, that he's still watching over with us. It kind of makes me feel more comfortable that he's still sitting next to me, you know, where I don't want to see his bucket sitting there by himself. From the police department to the softball field, Longer was beloved by everyone. Actually, one of the coaches was telling me that he has seven memorial shirts and he, that was the Longer's face on it, and he wears one for each day, remembering him each and every day. Pretty cool. Yeah, and it's just a reminder, every day police officers go out to protect us, and you never know if you're going to come home or not. They're putting themselves in line to protect and serve us. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, Tim. All right, One Hit Away brings us great advice and information on concussion treatment each week. Here's Darren Cedibaca with this week's tip. One Hit Away promotes education and an awareness of brain healing tools for individuals, teams, and other organizations. Our experts will speak or schedule conference calls with athletes, parents, officials, trainers, coaches, etc. We provide current articles and research on brain healing techniques. We offer materials customized to the individual's and or team's needs. We offer a national network of qualified professionals who will assist in your brain healing effort. Nothing is insignificant about brain healing. Education and awareness are the first steps. One hit away, understand your brain can change your game. Coming up, a West Catholic League battle with St. Francis hosting Sarah. Right now, here is our Chevron Top 10 softball poll. Little Kickers is a great soccer program for your child. With coaches trained in child development theory, Little Kickers classes are tailored to meet the specific child's age and ability. This creative approach to coaching will have a positive impact on your child far beyond the soccer field. These fun high energy classes at the Silver Creek Sportsplex lead to children with strong physical skills who are well balanced and confident. Classes are available now for ages 18 months to 9 years. Sign up for Little Kickers at the Silver Creek Sportsplex today. Guys, I got the jerseys. Oh, nice. <laughs> El Nino. Aquí. Ready? Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. Okay, got it. So hat trick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go. Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. A pitcher has to trust his catcher. So the guys have been working on building that trust. Trust fall. Trust fall. Trust fall. Dude, what was that? Sorry, babe, pitchers only. the Plex with action from the West Catholic League where both St. Francis and Sarah come into the week just one game behind first place Bellarmine. And the Padres feature Arizona State bound catcher Hunter Bishop whose older brother plays on the Seattle Mariners organization. The Lancers are loaded with talent including senior Andrew Martinez who has the team's two home runs this season. The Lancers and Padres this week. The Sarah Padres getting ready for a big league road game at St. Francis. First batter for Sarah is Tyler Villaroman. And this one is going to lead off home run. And just like that, it's 1-0 Sarah Padres on the Villaroman home run. Still in the first, runners at the corners for Angela Bordelin, who's right on that one, lining it for a base hit. Scoring is Chris Underwood, and the Padres have a 2-0 lead. More Sarah in the first. Thomas McCarthy with a runner at third sends this one deep to right. A fine catch out there by the Lancers' Kyle Joy, but Hunter Bishop scores 
Three nothing Sarah. The four run first capped off by this Nick Neck solid drive to left. That plates Bordelin and the Padres have a four nothing first inning lead. The Lancers get some great D to stay in it. First it's Jeremy Idens with a diving catch in right center. He got it. And then it's Ricky Martinez with a terrific diving stop and a strong throw to first to get the out. Here's one reason why Jeremy Idens is so good. A solid base hit and when the ball rolls a while, Idens decides to go for two and with his speed he is in there with a sliding double. The Padres up 6-1 in the seventh, and they get one more on this McCarthy blast to right. Bishop coming in to score one more time. The Padres hang on to win it behind a fine job on the mound by Chris Apicetia. He goes six full innings, giving up just one run on four hits as the Padres go to 4-1 and one on the season. Villa Roman with a big day at the plate for the victorious Sarah Padres. Sacred Heart Prep hosting Menlo in the Valpo Bowl for girls across. Menlo gets on the board first. Nikki Price runs straight towards the goal to start things off. But off the intercepted pass, it's Cam Gordon taking advantage, tying things up early. SHP down one off the penalty shot. Allison Carter scores, and we are knotted back up at three apiece. Both teams battling Price to Abby Wolfenden. Abby weaving her way through. Defender slipping it past the keeper, and the Knights are up one. After intermission, both teams went back and forth. Libby Muir fires at home, scores 6-all. Everyone getting into the mix for the Gators on this hot day. Allison Carter puts it in, and SHP is back up by one. But Menlo battled back, now up 1-10-9. Price showing off her move. She fakes out the defender and goes over the top, and Menlo has a two-goal lead. SHP back within one, though. Cam Gordon forcing herself in a good position to score, and she does tie the game again at 11 just seconds left in the game, Menlo down one, Abby Wolfen then comes up big to send the game into overtime, score 12 all. Very beginning of OT, SHP wins a faceoff, Cam Gordon streaking down the field, no one going to stop Cam, she gets the sudden death goal to win the game in thrilling fashion with a final of 13 to 12 to stay atop the West Bay Division standings. Service by Medallion celebrates teamwork and teammates who partner together to make great plays. This week we honor the Monta Vista baseball team. Nate White with a great catch. He then throws to Turner Olsen and Ryan Marsh for a double play. Monta Vista. Coming up big and it's great teamwork just as Service by Medallion partners with its customers to provide great janitorial and facility support services for Silicon Valley's best companies. The 12th annual World Games Basketball Tournament is coming up June 25th at the Santa Clara County Fair grounds. The tournament for boys and girls age 8 to 19 guarantees at least three games per team, a video game tournament, great food from around the world, and lots of fun. Sign up now at Hilltoppers Academy at Ymail.com. Coming up, the game of the week, it's Akalanis taking on College Park. And Menlo takes on the Kings Academy next. Hi, my name's Tony Clifford, Chief Operating Officer at First National Bank of Northern California and former San Ignatius Wildcat. Our bank is owned and operated locally by people who treat our customers like family. You can trust us to give your family or business the best banking services from a bank that's been around for over 50 years. And now we're in Sunnyvale at 425 South Matilda. Try something old as something new at First National Bank of Northern California. When an athlete is injured, you need the right help right away. StatMed Urgent Care has only experienced medical specialists on duty seven days a week. With no appointment needed on-site x-ray labs and private exam rooms, you'll receive the best possible care right away. For immediate medical issues to routine care, StatMed has two locations in downtown Lafayette and in the Pleasant Hill Concord area near the Sun Valley Mall. StatMed Urgent Care, the right care right now. Playing high school and college basketball taught me the value of teamwork while learning leadership and problem solving skills. Sports are an excellent way for kids to prepare for the real world as well as the importance of staying physically fit. I use these skills every day in my job as an officer with the San Jose Police Department. Being a police officer allows me to use what I have learned while serving my community. Visit our website at joinsjpdblue.com to find out more about a career with the San Jose Police Department. Be the force for greatness. Cal High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Stevens Creek Toyota, the number one Toyota dealership in the Bay Area. Stevens Creek Toyota, it's where the deals are. By Mirror Orthopedic Specialists, providing leading edge care for athletes of all ages. By First National Bank of Northern California, delivering quality products and services to businesses and individuals while enhancing the economic environment of our communities. And by the San Jose Police Department, 
Visit our website at joinsjpdblue.com to find out more about a career with the San Jose Police Department. Two of the East Bay's top teams meeting this week, Akalanes from the Diablo Foothill League comes into this game with a 9-1 record. That's right, the Dons taking on the College Park Falcons, playing very well this season and getting ready for league play by battling the Dons this week. It's the game of the week, our Taylor Lambert was there. Akalanes at College Park, Roger, you are clear for landing. That's my impression of a controller tower talking to that plane. Yeah. Akalani is played in an early run as Mad Burns comes in on the pass ball. No more bad jokes, I swear. But the Falcons of College Park get out of the jam with a 6-4-3 double play. Christian and Carsey on strand to Ian MacGyver to Jackson Driver. Pretty ball there. And College Park would get it right back in the second. Jackson Driver on third as Havlin Lim is having himself an at-bat. Out first, but knots it up at once. Third inning and the Falcons manufacturing more runs or run in this case. Josh Nelson with the sack scores Sean Hall 2-1 CP. That Josh Nelson, a good hitter, but only if he could field his position. Oh, wait, never mind. Nelson with the play in center. Then nothing happened until the seventh inning. But boy, did something happen then. Runner on third for Akalanes with no outs, but Ian MacGyver in relief makes the play on the mound. But next up, Tyler Ewing will make it count. Sack fly to right. Daniel Kim led off the inning with a triple, and he'll come in to score to tie the game up at two in the seventh inning, and then no scoring till the ninth inning. So we just skip to the ninth, because that makes sense. And there we would find Tommy Henderson doubling to lead off the inning for the Dons, and then Cole Gallagher will come up with the hit of the game to this point. Ball gets redirected, it looks like maybe, and pinch runner Chris Keller will come in to score three to two, so the ninth inning continues. And with that, the Dons continue to play runners. Matt Burns brings in Ewing and Cole Christensen, and that would do it, 5-2 final. And for that, we figured we would put the Aqualanes Dons on TV just a little bit more. Great game right there. We are here with the Aqualanes Dons, fresh off that big win. Let's meet these guys. All right, big squad right here. You know, you guys kind of had a couple of runs scored on you in the beginning. We're here with Grant Young. Uh, you kind of came in those middle innings and shut them down a little bit. You kept you guys in the game. Talk about uh, your relief appearance today. Yeah, I mean, uh, with these guys, I mean, this is obviously a really good program um, all the time. They're really good last year. And so with these guys, I mean, you got to make sure to throw it inside. You can't really leave it up against in the middle. So that's all I try to do. Uh, we're here with Tommy Henderson in the ninth. You led that inning off with, I feel like, I feel like it was a Major League Baseball game or something. In yeah. the ninth yeah. inning, you started off with a double, and uh, you had a pinch runner. It came around to score. Uh, what were you thinking in that in that at-bat, kind of leading off that inning? Uh, well, I was 0 for 3 going into that, that last at-bat, so uh, I try to keep it simple. Um, I knew he had a good slider, and he was working me uh, two sliders right off the bat. So I was sitting that battle off a couple fastballs and then worked away um, into the gap to get a double. Awesome. You scored the winning run, had that big double, but we'll go over here to the man of the hour, Cole Gallagher. Everybody was really excited to have Cole on camera today. Uh, Cole, you hit her in what would be the winning run in this game right here. What was going through your mind that at bat? Uh, I thought I would, if I just put, a, put some good wood on the ball, I, I thought I would drive in the run easily. And these guys right here, I'll give you a hard time, but how much do you care about all these guys here so on your much. squad? Huh? So much. <laughs> They're good guys. All right. Awesome. That's all from us here at College Park High School. Akalanes Dons, great win right there. Take us out, guys. One, two, three. ATP. Off to Sunnyvale for Menlo and the Kings Academy. Bottom one, the Knights threatening. The ball is bounced to Ryland Pade, who fires to Ben Samarajai, who tags the runner out at home. Next batter is Chris Bacchadine, and he smacks one to right. The catch is made. We got to play at the plate, but Coleman Yamako with a good slide beats the throw, and the Knights take a 1-0 lead. Menlo gets it back top two. David Farnham steps up and crushes one to the wall and left. Coming around all the way from first to score is R.J. Babera to tie it up. Menlo would take the lead though, an inning later, the ball gets away from the catcher, paid with a good read on it, breaks for the plate and scores, making it 2-1 to one Menlo. Chandler Yu really settled down after the first inning. He went six innings, allowing only one run and striking out six for the Knights. And then it's Menlo adding a little insurance. It's a straight steal home. Jared Lucian slides in. Plenty of time to make it 3-1, to one, and that's the way it would finish. Menlo goes on to win 3-1 to one to remain undefeated in the Peninsula Ocean Division. 
The Heritage Patriots getting together and storming out onto the field as they get ready to take on the California Grizzlies in the Livermore Stampede. First inning, Grizzlies threatening, looking to bunt. The ball is popped up, but caught by the catcher and fired down to first base. It's a double play. Great play by the catcher, Alyssa Kirk. Looking to do some damage at the plate as well. Kirk sends a shot into left field. Kylie Barrios will break for home plate, just beating the throw as she is safe, and it's an early Patriots lead. In the third, Riley Ellen at the plate hits a deep shot out to right field, going all the way back to the wall, but just falling short of a home run, and Ellen gets into second base with a stand-up double. Base is now loaded. Kylie Barrios hits a high chopper to first. Riley Ellen runs on contact. The throw is a bit too high with a little contact at the plate as the Patriots open up a 4-0 lead. California really needing a rally. Sydney Frankenberger hits a short hopper back to the pitcher. But look at the wheels on Sydney as she just beats out the throw and gets the Grizzlies a much-needed base runner. But the Patriots would get right back at it. And Asia Ramirez hits a rocket right up the middle. It pinballs around as it heads into the outfield. Barrios and Reina Alvarez score on the play as the Heritage Patriots win their first game of the Livermore Stampede. It's a final of 8 to nothing. Lexus of Stevens Creek presents a volunteer award each week. This award honors student athletes who volunteer in the community. The voting to choose our five finalists ends Wednesday night at midnight. Those five student athletes will then go through the interview process to see how the $10,000 will be divided. Congratulations to the five finalists who will be announced this week. Coming up, Diablo Valley opening day action with Clayton Valley and Concord. And the Los Gatos pitchers doing a great job on the mound, but also in the classroom. It's a biggie story next. Kale High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Stevens Creek Toyota, the number one Toyota dealership in the Bay Area. Stevens Creek Toyota, it's where the deals are. By Mirror Orthopedic Specialists, providing leading edge care for athletes of all ages. By First National Bank of Northern California, delivering quality products and services to businesses and individuals while enhancing the economic environment of our communities. To the Diablo Valley League, where league play starts this week. Two top teams, Clayton Valley and Concord meeting. Last week, we showed you Nick Nunez hitting his first high school home run. Yeah, he was pretty excited about he it. He was. He did a little dab. I is can't that, dab. Is that the dab? I don't know. I don't I have dab. I no idea what that is, but he did it. <laughs> Clayton Valley features senior Jack Miller, who is hitting 347 for the Ugly Eagles. Opening day highlights from the game played this week. Nothing like a grilled dog at a baseball game. They do it right at Concord as the Minutemen host Clayton Valley early on. Good ugly eagle defense. Runner at second. The ball ripped to third, but right there is Milan Mohanovic who tags the runner to get out of the inning. Then Mohanovic at third for Clayton Valley. Kevin Snyder sends the fly ball to center. Plenty deep enough to score Mohanovic, and Clayton Valley takes a 1-0 lead. Concord looking to get some back, but fine D from the Eagles. This is shortstop Bill Ralston grabbing the slow roller and getting the runner at first. But with the runner at second, Concord's Aaron Bird lays down a gem of a bunt. No play at first, and we have runners at the corners in the fourth. Clutching up for the Minutemen is John Storer, who ropes a single to left field. Waltzing home is Zach Corcoran, and we are tied at one all. First and third now for Concord with one out. The ball takes a crazy hop, but Kevin Snyder does a great job snagging it. Going to Ralston for one, over to Jack Miller for the double play. Still Concord scores on the play to take a 2-1 lead. Then with the runner at third and the fifth, a tough chance at first. The runner is safe. Scoring is Ryan Babin, and Concord is up 4-1. And that was plenty for pitcher Ryan Parisi, who goes the distance and gets this K to end the game. A four-hitter for Parisi as the team split their home-and-home -home series this week. Concord getting this one 4-1. The goalies from Bishop O'Dowd in Berkeley crossing as the two meet up on Tuesday night. Early first in the Yellow Jacket strike early as Ty Delaney takes the ISO and nails the top left corner 1-0 lead. Back come the Dragons, however, as Wesley Yost takes it off the restart and hits a slicing Trevor Link, who connects to give O'Dowd a 2-1 lead. More BOD as Jackson Coldiron feeds it inside to Maxwell Pierce, who finds Twine and its 3-1 Dragons. Jack Ditzler would take his turn at setting up Pierce as he finds the sophomore on the doorstep. It's 4-1. Second quarter now, and it's more of the same. This time, Yost hits Pierce alone on the crease to stretch the lead to four. Berkeley would fight back in the third as Ben Price hits Peter Calvelli for the time and room shot, and it's a 9-6 BOD lead. More jackets as David Marcus dips under his man, slips the slide, and scores to bring Berkeley within two. 10-7 now, and Delaney sweeps right, cuts inside, and stings the top right corner for his third goal of the game, but it would not be enough. As the Bishop O'Dowd Dragons hold off the jacket comeback and win it, 11-8 the final and approve to 5-0 in the Diablo Valley League. 
Each week we go inside Cal High Sports with athletes who are outstanding for a variety of reasons. Taylor Lambert joins us now with a baseball pitcher who's biggie in baseball, he's biggie in school, he's got biggie hair. He's biggie, he's biggie. It's he's all biggie. Just biggie. biggie. <laughs> Robert, baseball is the thinking man's game. Sure, talent doesn't hurt, but it's the mind which separates the good from the very great. This suits Los Gatos pitcher Hunter Biggie just fine as the senior right-hander is equal parts talent and smarts. Hunter Biggie does it all. The Los Gatos senior is the ace of the pitching staff after earning our co-player of the year honor last season for the CCS. He owns a 4.5 GPA, was a starting quarterback during football season, and is headed to Harvard next year. But really, who is Hunter Biggie? He's a, a thinker, and he's kind of a jokester. All right, so I can get audio on you. Can you say and spell your first name? Hunter Biggie, H-U-N-T-E-R space B-I-G-G-E. He's the same guy on and off the field. Um, he's hilarious. He's, if, if you want a guy around that's gonna make you laugh and also gonna make you work harder, you need Hunter Biggie around. Now, Biggie is an interesting young man. We thought we were getting a baseball story, but when contacting Hunter, he said, meet me at the pool. Turns out, Biggie has enough time in his schedule to play baseball and moonlight on the swim team during the same season. I mean, like school gets out at two, practice doesn't start till 3.30. I can usually swim for about an hour after school, and then we got swim practice at like nine o'clock on spring break, and baseball's at three, so there's definitely time in the day for it. <laughs> and that is very much a Hunter Biggie answer. Kind of like, yeah, it's no big deal, not a problem. But don't let that laid back personality fool you. He is laser focused on the mound and in the classroom. His most outstanding trait is being competitive, independent of what it is, whether it's sports or school or, or academics. He just, he's focused, he knows what he wants. Um, and ever since he was little, he was just always super competitive. You do have to learn how to balance both your schoolwork and, and your practice schedule. Academics here at Los Gatos are, are a big deal. Hunter has you know, been in a number of AP and honors courses from the time he was a freshman all the way through now. So to be able to, to balance that elite athlete status with those AP classes really takes a special talent. He's just a game changer on and off the field because I've seen him in the classroom and he works just as hard as on the baseball field. It's just who he is. Hunter brings those smarts onto the mound as well outthinking hitters instead of trying to overpower them. A strategy which should serve him well next year as he'll play for the Harvard baseball team. Uh, kind of just through the whole recruiting process, I made a decision early that I wanted to go to like a, a great academic school because if baseball doesn't work out, I'll always have that to kind of fall back on. And I think Harvard just kind of fit everything from the baseball side and the academic side. You know, he's going to do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to start his own business, he could do that. If he wants to climb a mountain, he could do that. Um, if he wants to play professional baseball, I think he's got a great chance at that too. Um, I can't wait to see him, you know, playing at Harvard in the future. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I'm just as much of a fan as I am a coach to him. So we go back to the question that we asked at the very beginning of this piece. Who is Hunter Biggie? Well, it turns out he's a lot of different things, but mostly he's just really good at all of them. Now, Hunter, a stellar pitcher for the Cats and an even better young man. And another thing that we love about him here at Cal High Sports is when he's on the mound, he works very quickly. It's a quick game and it really comes in handy when you have to come back, edit the film, write the story, and do all that. So thank you, Hunter. We appreciate it. I hate this guy. Way too talented. He's Yes, he's just awful. Yeah. All these strikeouts, I mean, for I real. Know, it's terrible. <laughs> all right. Synergy Environmental Solutions cleans up environmental hazards, asbestos, mold, and all the dirty work for Bay Area schools, corporations, and homes. So each week, Synergy honors the athletes who do the dirty work on the field. This week doing the dirty work is Davis Barkasi blocking the plate to keep a run from coming in for Sacred Heart Cathedral. Davis Barkasi doing the dirty work, just like Synergy Environmental Solutions. Lots of ways to keep in touch with us during the week. You can find all of the elements to our 
our show. On our YouTube site, there's a tab on the site on our Cal High Sports Bay Area website, so you can go directly there. Be sure to, to subscribe while you're there to get updates on new videos. You can buy DVD copies of every game you see on the show tonight. Just go to our CalHighSportsBayArea.com website and order your game right there. And of course, follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at CalHighSportsBA. We now have more than 11,000 followers, and don't forget about Facebook. Coming up, the Togo's Monster Game is Heritage Meets California. And later, Santa Clara battles Mountain View as Cal High Sports Bay Area continues. Club sport at the Silver Creek Sportsplex is fitness for the entire family. Mom can feel secure in one of 120 individual fitness classes while the children play in the child care center or learn to swim in the club sport pool. Dad gets a great workout in the state-of-the-art cardio and weight training area. Classes range from Zumba to aquatics and everything in between. No matter what your fitness goals are, Club Sport welcomes everyone. Club Sport San Jose has something for the entire family. DEFCON Construction is number one in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley because of trust. 95% of our business comes from repeat customers. They know the customer is our top priority. That's why DEFCON was the choice for the 49ers new stadium and for the new Earthquake Stadium. DEFCON was also chosen when outstanding schools like Bellarmine, St. Francis, St. Ignatius, and Mitty wanted the very best, on time and on budget. Top Bay Area companies know DEFCON is the best choice whether it's new construction or renovation. DEFCON Construction, helping to build the best in Silicon Valley. I definitely got a lot faster. A couple days after I did my first class, I improved my 60 time at a showcase by 0.3 seconds, which is outstanding. Uh, well, definitely working on the form component. Uh, I usually run upright where you're supposed to have your chest at a 45 degree angle. We worked on that and worked on it until I could actually feel myself uh, when I did something wrong. But definitely that improved 60 time uh, helped and a lot of coaches came up to me and talked to me after that. It doesn't matter whether you're the biggest guy or the smallest guy in the gym. You always treat the same, and it's just a great place to be. And here's an opportunity for San Jose. Perez Garcia. He's got Shea Salinas. Gets by one man. The shot! Oh my goodness! Chris Wondolowski! Goal San Jose! This is Dr. Michael Miklich of Muir Orthopedic Specialists on the sideline with the Monta Vista High School Mustangs. And you're watching Cal High Sports Bay Area. Back at the Sportsplex with two of the Bay Area's very best teams meeting in a non-league game this week. Heritage from the Bay Valley League taking on the East Bay League's California this week. It's our second Togo's Monster Game and Jack Washer was there. Yeah. Both of these teams gearing up now for uh, league play, Heritage and California. It should be a great pitching matchup for California, Zach Chalmers, a junior, and for Heritage, Kevin Milam. Both of these pitchers have a great strikeout to walk ratio at about 7 to 1 on each side. Uh, both of them only have about one loss combined between the two. And Coach Brodson for California told me that this is a good indicator to see where his team's at as league play heats up next week. It should be a good one. California and Heritage in this week's Togos Monster Game. Chalmers would have a short day on the mound, but he escaped a bases loaded nobody out jam here in the first. But the Pats exploded in the top half of the second. Alex Robinson battling hard with two strikes. Hits a double down the line, putting runners at second and third. After an RBI ground out, made it one nothing. Bubba D'Antoni continues the moving line by ripping one into left. D'Antoni with the hustle gets a double. Robinson scores on the play. Then Jake Cruz hits one back through the middle. That brings around D'Antoni and Milam to make it 4 0 Heritage. But wait, there's more. Still going in the second. Dominic Espino bloops one to center. The Grizzlies are going to get the out at home, but Jake Cosgrove already scored on the play, and that made it 5 0 Pats. Grizzlies looking for some magic here in the bottom of the third. Matt Ramirez lays down a great bunt. Beats the throw, but D'Antoni doesn't give up on the play and guns the runner going to home. Chris Troy on the tag. Espino up again in the fourth, and he continues his solid game. Cruz scores all the way from second on the RBI single. That made it 6-0 Heritage, and that was plenty of run support for Milam, who goes a distance, a complete game shutout. Heritage with a nice convincing win, 6-0. Espino with a solid game, 3-for-3 three three with two RBIs. 
Milam afterwards talked about preparing for a big game like this and what a win means for this Heritage team. What can I do to help the team? I knew we were going to uh, have a tough time scoring off this guy going into the game. And, uh, you know, I just want to go out there and I want to keep them to zero runs. And I was able to do that and we were able to get some runs off the guy. It, it's huge. Uh, this is a big game. It's going to turn out to be big when seeding comes out for NCS. Um, bouncing back, that's what we do. That's what good teams do. In San Ramon with the Togos Monster Game, I'm Jack Washer, Cal High Sports, Bay Area. Valley Christian traveling to Midi for a West Catholic League showdown Tuesday. Top of the first, Casey Zoback on first, Lauren Hendrickson starting things off, sending it over the fence for the two-run homer, giving the Warriors the early lead. Bottom two, Mitty with the runner on second and third. Lauren Lozano connects for the base hit. Alyssa Valdez and Rebecca Ortiz cross home, tying things up at two. Base is loaded for Mitty in the bottom of the third. Senior Lindsey Gabo knocks one to deep center. That's going to allow Kaylin Stewart and Lozano to score, increasing the Monarchs' lead four to two. Mitty clicking on all cylinders. Erica Yeager getting into the mix here. She gets the ball to fall for another base hit. Julia Lucas and Mackenzie Thorpe cross home. The Monarchs starting to really pour it on. Lozano hits what looks to be a homer, but it's ruled a double. Either way, Lozano scores. Bottom three, Mitty connecting on all cylinders. Pitcher Savannah Smith goes up the middle, plating Lozano, who turned it in to a double. And then on defense, the ball is popped up to left, but check out Kaylin Stewart making the diving grab to end the inning. Mitty looking for some more insurance in the fourth. Runners on second and third. Erica Yeager with her second hit of the day. Gabo with plenty of time to score. The Monarchs win with a final of 12-2. First place in the West Catholic League and undefeated on the season. The Pioneer Girls softball team is off to a fine start again this season. Girls meeting Robert to talk about it at the Rikus Center this week. We're at the Rikus Center in Menlo Park with athletic fitness, creative arts, nature awareness, and a whole lot more. The Rikus Center. And here they are having an outstanding start to their season, the Pioneer Mustangs. Let's see our ladies. Right here with me is senior Mackenzie Drake. Mackenzie, the only senior on this team. So tell me what it's like to be, you know, the senior leader. Um, it's pretty cool to have all these people, like, looking up to me for guidance. Uh, I look a lot to my juniors uh, for help and assistance in anything. And next year you're going to San Jose State to major in? Forensic science. Yeah, you looking forward to that? Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, that'll be great. All right. Over here, Holly Azevedo, the starting pitcher on this team, one of the top pitchers in the nation, going to UCLA. We know all about this stuff. Tell me what it's like, though, to be a part of this team and what these girls are all about. Um, it's really great. Um, we have a, a lot of great team chemistry. Um, you know, it's a lot of fun playing with a, a team that backs you up and has a lot of support behind you. Are you excited to have your college decision out of the way you can enjoy this year, next year, before and going off to UCLA? Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited to be a Peachy Bruin. Right here is Lauren Garcia, another junior on this team. And with the injured leg here, you've been battered a little bit this season. What is, how tough is it out there in uh, high school softball at Pioneer? Um, it's really tough. And also being like an infiller for Holly, you don't get a lot of action. But um, when you do, you got to be ready. It's a lot of fun to play behind her and stuff. Now, last year you guys lost in the championship game. What do you think you can accomplish this year? Um, I think this year with not having the defeated weight on our shoulders, I think we can accomplish a lot more. Not, we're not as tense going up to the plate, and we're just having fun doing, playing our game. Yeah. Sometimes getting a loss can be valuable, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good. Congratulations to Pioneer Mustang so far. Ladies, take us out with a cheer. Mountain View and Santa Clara meet at the top of the El Camino division. But first, here is our Chevron Top 10 Baseball Poll. Cal High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Wells Fargo, proud sponsor of the Game of the Week. By Lexus of Stevens Creek. Lexus of Stevens Creek is once again sponsoring the Volunteer Scholarship Award. Five scholarships worth a total of $10,000 will be handed out at the annual Cal High Sports Banquet and by the Rikus Center, where goals and dreams become a reality. Action now from the El Camino Division. Three teams come into this week with two league losses. One of those teams, Mountain View, likes to hit the ball a little bit with a team batting average over 300. That's a lot. That's good. Yeah, but tied with the Spartans are the Bruins from Santa Clara. The Bruins feature hard-hitting senior Michael Brown, who's batting 432. Santa Clara and Mountain View playing a home-and-home -home series this week.
The Mountain View Spartans huddle up and break for the field as they take on the visiting Santa Clara Bruins. Top of the first runner at second. Manny Espinosa hits a sharp grounder, finding a hole and getting into right field. Peko Vehekite will be sent home and the throw to the plate is not in time and the Bruins take an early 1-0 lead. In the bottom half of the inning with two on, Jacob Orloff sends a shot over the infield and it makes it all the way to the wall. Tommy Cruz and Grant Jambetta easily cross home plate and the Spartans go on top. 2-1. to one. Third inning now, the Spartans still rolling with two runners on. Matthew Zapata hits a line drive right up the middle into the outfield. Cruz and Alex Sullivan will score, standing up as Mountain View opens up a big 5-1 to one lead. Fifth inning runner at first for the Bruins. They need a rally, and Michael Brown hits a slice down the right field line that gives the outfielder some trouble and allows Brown to stroll into second base. Next up, Manny Espinosa hits a sharp grounder up the middle that's fielded cleanly and thrown over to first for the out, but Kyle Martin would score on the play, and Santa Clara has some life. But pitcher Zach Banks would get right back in rhythm, continuing to throw the heat, getting the punch out here to end the inning and limiting the Bruins to just three hits on the day as Mountain View wins it by a final score of 5-2 to two to take the league game against Santa Clara. The Spartans now 5-3 and three in league play. St. Ignatius making the trip down to the South Bay to face Bellarmine. First set, the Bells would strike first off Sean Stockus' kill to give Bellarmine the lead in the first 15-14. But the Wildcats said not so fast. SI's Ian Watts goes from defense to offense to keep the Cats in the game and extend the set 25-24 Wildcats. Bellarmine would retake the lead and put the Cats in a tough situation, leading to Will Smith smashing it down to take game one. Second set, the Wildcats would tie up the match after a commanding performance, especially from Ryan Lau keeping SI in it. Third set, not much changed. The Cats were in full control and breezed through the Bells again. Thanks to Lau, he's killing it. The Cats take the lead 2-1. to one. Fourth set, Bellarmine would dig themselves into a hole, but don't worry because Elliot Smolin was there to clean up the mess in fourth the fifth set. And in the fifth, Bells were just too much for the Cats. Smith hits a powerful kill down the middle to give the Bells a 10-8 lead. And Jacqui Sabihana wrapped it up with one of his 17 kills. And the Bells beat the Wildcats in five sets to remain in first place in the West Catholic League. DGDG.com is with us every week featuring a play that made everyone happy. This week's Be Happy play goes to the Sacred Heart Prep Gators. And over time, the Gators get the big time goal to end the game in sudden death and they were pretty happy about it. Hugs all around for the Gators in this week's Be Happy play. Go to DGDG.com to see how you can be a happy car buyer. Coming up, it's the play of the week. Here's one of the contenders. We'll announce the winner next. But first, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rikus Center. Hi, I'm Andrew Havili, and today's training tip is the barbell high pull. Lily's going to do a barbell high pull, and she's going to use her explosiveness to get the bar up. She's not, a lot of, she's not using a lot of arms. This is a great exercise if you don't want to do the clean because you don't want to catch or you have bad wrists or anything like that. And you're just working on the explosive, the extension of the hips, okay? Two rules, you keep the barbell close to you and the elbows higher than the wrist the whole time. And you just work on that explosive that's coming forward. The winner of the play of the week will receive an invitation to our end of the season awards banquet May 23rd at Levi's Stadium thanks to the San Francisco 49ers. Yep, here it is, the play of the week. Week. We start with College Park's Ian McIver making a strong play on the mound for the out at a crucial time in that game. Here's Alhambra's Carly Spirocino tagging the runner and throws to first for that double play to end the game. College Park again, it's Josh Nelson with a terrific diving catch in the outfield there. We like a diving catch and here's another great one. It's Jeremy Idens coming in and laying out and he did catch the ball. A terrific play there. There's Mitty's Kaylin Stewart with a great catch of her own. The Mitty Monarchs really good once again this year and they play great defense. Menlo's Jared Lucia taken off from third. It's a straight steal of home and he is safe at the plate stealing home. But the play of the week goes to Sam Rabios from Milpitas. He loses both his mitt and the ball but regains control and catches them both and gets the out at first. Sam Rabios with a terrific play for the play of the week. That's the play of the week and that's Cal High Sports Bay Area for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Marissa Lovis. Join us next week when we introduce you to some three sport athletes from around the Bay Area. We'll see you then.